Please pray with me. Holy God, open our hearts to your presence, open our eyes to your presence, open our ears to your call, open our hearts to your love. Amen. There are moments in our lives when we realize that we, are su uh, that we suddenly become a part of something greater than ourselves. These moments tend to unfold unexpectedly, often at pretty inconvenient times. They seldom manifest as dramatic lightning or captivating eureka moment. In fact, one might be forgiven these days for echoing the sentiments of the author of the first prophecy of Samuel. The word of the Lord was rare, and in those days, visions were not widespread. And yet, nonetheless, many of us can likely still remember that moment in our lives when we re recognize God's call on us. I will probably never forget that moment during my early teenage years when I first sensed a peculiar, deep yearning growing in my heart. I recall sitting in a beautiful chapel belonging to missionary nuns in my neighborhood. Each year, a group of sisters would take their vows and accept their missionary calls to far-off places like Papua New Guinea, Peru, or Angola. Each year, during that service, they would gather round the altar and sing that captivating song with which we started our worship. Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Completely unaware of the twists of my journey, I could never have anticipated that one day I would become a political analyst for the British Parliament, then to lecture at the University of London, only to then move across the ocean to become and serve as an Anglican priest. I had no idea at that moment of the future. But I knew something inexplicable was burning deep in my heart. Those women instilled in me a passion for God and people, and that changed me forever. And finally, four years ago, as I stood before our bishop, about to be ordained a deacon, and uh, sang that exact same song, I couldn't stop the tears falling down my face, and it was a moment I will never forget. But I share that story with you because I believe that every one of us has encountered a similar experience in their lives. These are the moments when our hearts are stirred with a profound sense of thrill and excitement. It's like that gut feeling, a blend of joy and thrill, signaling that there is something in the world that you're meant to do. These moments may not be flashy, but they are true, authentic, and leave an imprint, a lasting imprint on our souls. So picture a moment in the life of a physicist when wrestling with equations and data, she finally experiences a profound sense of fulfillment and excitement as if the universe was unveiling its secrets. Or maybe recall the first time you Witness the smile on your patient's face, realizing the tangible impact you made on their lives. Or perhaps a musician composing a melody that finally resonates with their soul late at night, a melody that one day may touch the hearts of many. Or it could be receiving a heartfelt card from a student expressing how you unknowingly changed their lives through a lesson you don't even recall giving. These are the moments when our deepest callings unfold, each uniquely powerful in infusing our lives with purpose and significance. And the Bible is filled with those call narratives from creators, where are you in the Garden of Eden, to God calling Moses out of the burning bush, to Isaiah's visionary experience in the temple, or Jesus' calling specific apostles. Yet the narrative 
of the narratives of the boy Samuel's call and the unassuming Nathaniel stand out for their unique details. In both instances, God calls, uh, God's call disrupted ordinary lives, choosing unassuming and common people to carry extraordinary tasks. Samuel was merely a child offered to the temple by his mother Hannah for mentoring by the elderly priest Eli. Wilder may have been more learned and experienced people in Israel, God chose to call a child, perhaps to highlight that a call to ministry is not exclusive to the prominent or powerful, but it extends to each one of us. Each of us is like that small puzzle piece necessary to complete the amazing painted canvas of God's kingdom. Have you also noticed how God calls Samuel by name? Indeed, the soft cadence of God's voice echoes through the temple at Shiloh three times before Samuel grasps its significance. Our names serve as signatures of our identity, often embodying who we are, holding meaning and enabling recognition. When God calls us by our name, it is akin to saying, Matthew, don't worry, I have already searched you out and known you. I, have dis I discern your thoughts from afar, and even in your mother's womb, I had already known you. I know all your beauty and all your faults, and yet, with all that knowledge, I still choose to call you by your name, for you are mine, and here is your call. But how do we discern that call in our lives? Recognizing God's call certainly requires some deep listening on our part. Amidst the busyness of life, it's easy to drown out the subtle whispers of God's voice. The Bible conveys that the Spirit of God seldom speaks through a powerful storm, but is more akin to a soft nudge, a gentle encouragement, or perhaps an intuition that persists and repeats. So to attune our hearts to this divine cadence, we must therefore foster a spirit of stillness, establishing sacred times and spaces in our daily lives where we can hear that call and respond to it. It is for that reason that I am always intrigued by uh, Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, who encourages us to embrace what he calls the periods of holy laziness. He reminds us of the importance of deliberately slowing down, allowing space for God's voice to penetrate our lives. In our fast-paced world, this may seem counterintuitive, but we open our, in these moments of intentional rest, we open ourselves to that transformative power of God's call. And in these instances, it is that our minds engage more in lateral thinking and our souls and hearts open up to new horizons. Finally, although our reading for this morning from Samuel omits this, it is important to note that God calls Samuel to proclaim doom on his mentor Eli. This is not a joyful message. And here is a moment in the life of Israel when God raises up a prophet in the midst of trouble. Good trouble, we might perhaps add. Here, God prepares once again to speak the divine word into a world still bent on ignoring it. And that call narrative strikingly resembles a pivotal night in the life of Martin Luther King Jr. In late January 1956, after his first arrest and amid credible reports of plans to assassinate him and his family, King found himself in a similar moment. 
Staying late up at night, sometime around midnight, he brewed himself some coffee and prayed out loud, prayed out loud while sitting at his kitchen table in Montgomery, Alabama. As a young 27-year-old preacher from an upper middle class background, recently celebrating his wife's pregnancy and having just submitted his doctoral dissertation, he suddenly finds himself confronted with the daily harassment and uh, death threats. In, these, in the face of these challenges, he begins to waver and question the path of his ministry. It is in this vulnerable moment that Dr. King opens up saying, Lord, I'm down here trying to do what, to do what is right. I believe, in, uh, I believe in the righteousness of our cause. However, I must confess my weakness. I feel a sense of faltering. My courage is waning. The power of his vulnerability resonates so strongly in these words. But it seems that God filled his heart with an irresistible voice. At that moment, I could hear an inner voice, he says. Martin Luther, stand up for righteousness. Stand up for justice. Stand up for truth. And lo, I will be with you even until the end of the world. And from that night onwards, for the next 12 years, like the prophet of the ages past, and with a voice that, did not, that many did not want to hear, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. not so much prophesied the future, but used his voice and platform to call out the injustices of the world about him and spoke to the nation and the world about God's abiding purpose and a dream for us, a dream of liberty, peace, equality, justice, and opportunity for all. Amen.